everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my craft table and channel. I'm so glad that you're here with me today. And if you're new, I am super excited to meet you. So today's video tutorial is another design space tutorial. And this time I will be focusing on the slice tool. Um, I've done a couple of videos recently. One was using the monogram maker feature in design space. I will link that for you here in the top corner. And then I had another video where I focused on contouring. So that's another design space tutorial video, which I will also link up here in the top. But today's focus is going to be slicing. So what I'm going to be doing is I purchased this box from the Dollar Tree and this is a pretty you know, sizable box here. And what I want to use this for are my alcohol markers. Um, it's got a hinge lid and then it's got a little hinge clasp right here that keeps the lid down. And so basically I am wanting to re, um, reorganize my alcohol markers. So I've been keeping them in a variety of um, containers and I just haven't found anything that works until I came across that box. But right now I have basically a cosmetic bag and this is not working. First of all, the sides aren't very sturdy and so the markers will fall out um, and it only holds so much. So um, these here are the dual tip Hawaiian Shores collection from Altenew. These are just regular art markers. They're actually really nice. I, I do like these. They have a really nice brush tip. I don't know if you can see that. And then, whoop, so on the other end, they have a super ultra fine tip. And I really like this for writing slash detail work. So this is a nice set of markers, but this is not going to go in that box. These are my alcohol markers. Now I actually have two brands. And I know you've seen these on my channel before. So I have my Hobby Lobby alcohol markers and I think I'm gonna put these in a smaller container because there's only like 24 of them. And there, there's, you know, I won't be expanding that collection because it's a set of 24 and that's kind of the end of that collection. But I do like these markers, so I'm gonna be putting them in a smaller container. But I have been collecting these Alta New alcohol markers. And these, I've just been buying them when they've been going on sale, um, literally like 50% off. So they have a nice brush tip on one end, and then they have a bullet tip on the other end. And I absolutely love these markers. So I have three different um, collections. I do have one Copic marker here. This is the Colorless Blender, and I really like this for when you have those little oopsies and you need to make a correction with your alcohol markers. So I'm gonna be putting my Alta New markers in this box here, and this box will hold about, it, well, I guess it'll hold about four um, sets of 12, and so far I have three, so I know I can get another set in there. Poss I don't know if I could get five, but I know I can get four for sure. And then I'll just put my other markers in another container and that will be just fine. So let's go ahead and head over to Design Space and let me show you the design that we're gonna use and let me teach you how to use the uh, slice tool in Design Space and then we'll put the alcohol marker box together. Okay, here in Design Space, I have already brought in three images that I would like to use. And I will most likely link this Design Space project link down in the description box, along with a list of all of the supplies that are used in today's projects and any links for those to help you if you want to recreate this project yourself. Um, so a couple of things may contain alcohol. Now, uh, don't worry, we are not talking about adult beverages here. I'm actually gonna be using this design here in the middle to demonstrate the slice tool. 
And then this, I really saw this. This is so cute. I'm going to show you how to do some layering with vinyl. I'm excited about this. It's just such a fun design. And then this one, I am going to just use a portion of this particular uh, image over here. And we're going to put all three of them together on top of the box. And it's just going to look great. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so we can kind of see everything that we're doing. And by the way, this is a great scrap buster. Um, for the most part, other than a couple of larger elements um, over here, really everything is, is pretty small. I would say like the size of an index card or less. And so this is a great scrap buster project as well. So I think the words might be the largest portion, but other than that, all of this is pretty tiny and we just layer it together. So I basically went into images and I just searched up markers. This image came up and I thought it was really fun and festive. This image came up and I really like the font that's on here. So I decided to use this instead of typing a font. And then um, in order to demonstrate the slice feature, I chose, uh, I went in and I just did alcohol. And believe it or not, there is a ton of designs that are centered around alcohol in design space. And so I really like the script font here, and I'm going to show you how we're going to slice out what we want and what we don't want. Okay, so normally I would go into shapes and I would grab a square and I would take the square and size it. Now let me measure my box really fast. It's about um, nine and three quarters by six and three quarters. So let me resize this. I'm gonna come up to the little lock and lock it 9.75 and 6.75. And then I'm going to lock that back. Okay, so this would represent my little bin and normally I would just color it just for design purposes so it would you know, match aesthetically what I'm trying to do so I could see if the project is looking like what I envision. However, I have recently learned of a neat little trick. So this is the size of the box lid that I have to work with. But instead of having a shape and coloring it, I can go here to this operations menu, click on the down arrow, and go all the way to the bottom and click on guide. And now I have this pink, hot pink outline, and you'll see over here in your layers panel, it is a guide because I really don't need to cut the top of the box. I just need the size of the area that I'm working with. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to grab my markers um, image. Now in the layers panel, what you'll notice is you've got several things. And this is going to be, um, you've got the markers, kind of like the back layer, and then you have a white layer, which is these little pins here, um, and then the stripes, the white stripes on the little bowl. You've got the blue little zigzag and bottom part of the bowl. And then you've got the four or five marker um, little colors for the pit, for the caps. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to actually go in here and I'm going to select just that blue layer and I want to duplicate that and I'm going to move it over here for just a moment and I'm going to bring in, oops, I meant to grab all of those at one time. Okay, and then I'm going to bring this over here. So the vinyl that I chose today, I have one design for um, the blue on the bowl, and then I just have a, like a plain blue for this um, pen cap. So what I'm gonna do is in this duplicated layer, then I am 
going to go to the contour feature down here in the bottom of the layers panel and I'm going to hide those two. I'm going to basically hide the little elements that go on the bowl and so I'm left with my pen cap. And then I am going to bring that, uh, let's see, I'm going to go into the layers panel. I'm going to click on the other one, the one that is still on the bowl itself. And I'm going to go to contour one more time. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the pin cap because I don't need it. Now, this is not a lesson in contouring. That literally is just a bonus. <laughs> Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pen cap here and I'm just going to slide it into place like that. And that's where that will go. Then one more thing is because this is all grouped together, I'm going to come to my layers panel. I'm going to click on that blue pen cap from the top and I'm just going to bring it down here into the grouping so that everything is staying together. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now all these things will um, want to cut on all different mats and we will probably put a lot of elements on the same mat just in different locations so that we can have less mats for cutting. But this is my marker bowl that I just thought was really fun. And I'm going to pull it in over here and I'm going to resize it just a little bit. So I'm thinking um, I don't need it to be really ginormous. And so let's see, that is now at 3.42 by 4.82. And so I think that is, that is okay for now. I'm just going to leave that the way it is. And I'm going to grab both of those and just move them over here out of the way. So now let's go ahead and work with the two other elements. So we have a design for our box and now we need some words. So the markers image here on the right, now that is a multi-layer image. And so what I'm gonna do is open the layers panel. I'm gonna hide the markers themselves and I'm going to hide the little square and so I left with the word markers and I really like that font. Okay. Okay. So now that this particular image just is left with the word markers, which is what I'm going to want. We're going to use this slice feature in design space down here in the bottom of the layers panel to slice out the, um, we want really to get rid of the may and the contain. I just want to keep the word alcohol. So I'm actually going to zoom in so I can see what I'm doing and okay, kind of put that right there, move this over here. So what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to go into shapes and I'm going to just grab a rectangle and I'm going to cover the contain and I'm just going to come straight across like this. Now I want to make sure let me go up a little bit because I don't want to cut off the top of my L. So now I have just two layers. I have the may contain alcohol image, which is just one layer. And I have my box, which is just one layer. And then I'm going to select both of them. And then you'll notice down here in the bottom of the layers panel, the slice feature is now illuminated. When they're grayed out like this, that means they're not available at that moment for whatever reason with your image, it's not compatible. So with the slice, you can only slice two layers at a time. So I'm going to click on slice and give it a second. All right, here we go. And then literally you can just move things off to the side and like this looked like it didn't do anything but it did so there we go there's our um, first slice and i'm going to select all of those and delete them okay so we're going to do this two more times because i'm going to get rid of this little corner over here and i'm going to get rid of that little swoop there above the o so let me go back to shapes and i think this time i'm just going to click on one of these and 
I'm going to move that over there. I don't need to even resize anything, so that worked perfect. It covered that little corner. I'm going to select both, then slice. And then I'm going to move the alcohol away. And then these two, I'm just going to go ahead and select them all and delete. All right, we just have to do a slice so one more time. I'm going to go into images and I am going to just choose that little shape again. But this time I want to make it a little thinner and I think I'm probably going to have to angle it just a little bit. So I'm going to move it over here and um, I'm going to be really careful because I do not want to slice off. In fact, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more to make sure I can see what I'm doing. Oh, that's a little too big. But I'm really just wanting, I'm just wanting to slice off that one little part right there. Okay, so I think that covers it. And then my L and my O are left intact. All right, so I'm going to select both of those and then hit slice for a final time. And then I can move alcohol away, select both of these, and delete. All right, so now when we sliced three times, it's totally fine. Now I have the word alcohol because my markers are alcohol markers. And then I have the word markers. And I am just bringing these really big so that I can see what I'm doing because I want to line them up and see kind of how like how do i want these to line up let's see maybe make the markers a little bit smaller just kind of wanting to nest it in there just ever so slightly kind of like that all right i think that's what i like so I'm going to go ahead and, oop, I don't want to grab that box over there. I'm going to grab both of these words and I'm going to do attach. And I'm doing attach because I don't want them to change in any way. You could weld them together, but, you know, I might want to use this file for another box and I would not want the word alcohol or, you know, something like that. So. I want to be able to detach that if needed. If I wanted to keep it permanently um, stuck together, then I would probably use the weld. All right, so now let's bring in all of our elements and see how we want to size them. All right, so I'm going to bring in my words right here. And I'm just going to kind of eyeballing things for right now. And then I'm going to bring in my nice little image. Okay, so I think we'll have alcohol markers there. Then we can nest that in like that. And I think that's great. And I actually really like that sizing. So I'm going to double check my size because I'm using my joy. This is a 4.32 by this will work on my joy mat and as far as the markers thing all of this will great so all of this is now ready to go and actually since my box is like a, a an opaque um, teal color I'm actually going to be doing this in white vinyl so that'll that's what it'll look like on top of the the green box all right, let's look at our make screen and see how everything um, looks and make sure everything is the way we need it to go. Now, when we go to the make screen, we have, a well, we have our words, which are in white vinyl. We have markers here, um, this the part of the bowl and those part of the pins, that's in white. So that'll end up on one mat. Then I have all of these little pen caps, so five of them. And I can go ahead and change all of them now to the same color. I can leave them as different colors and then move them around on the mats. I think I'll show you how to do that. Then I have this blue layer and this gold layer. So when I go to the make screen, I'm probably going to be moving things to make as few mats as possible. 
going to click on make and see and make make sure everything is the way it needs to cut all right so you can see here that we've got our word for alcohol markers and we've got our little um elements here this is going to be part of the bowl and part of the pens so i think this is fine just the way it is and you know i'll just have my i will just have my um white vinyl ready to go okay so this mat is good and you'll notice that i have the four and a half by 12 mat you could do this on the smaller joy mat you would just need to select that then let's go to mat number two so it looks like two three five six and seven all house those little pin caps and then i have little strips of scrap vinyl so what i'm going to do is i am going to bring all of these little pin caps to one mat all right so um the other thing is down here because i used the same color these two are already on the same mat now i could just bring everything to this mat and then I have the gold. The gold will be here. This is the bottom layer. So I think I'm just gonna leave that the way it is, totally fine. But as far as these pin caps, I think I'm going to go to the mat, select the image, click on the three little dots, hit move. And I'm just gonna move everything here to the last mat where all of the pin caps are. And I'm just going to, um, like this one is um, blue. Let's see, I'm gonna do kind of a Roy G. Biv looking thing. So there's green, there's blue. Then the yellow, I'm gonna go grab that. I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, but I do kind of wanna keep them in the order that I have them. So there's my yellow. Here is my pink. Okay. and I feel like I'm the missing one. Oh, the gray. Now I'm actually not gonna use gray. I'm actually going to use purple as far as that physical vinyl that I put on the mat. Okay, so we have the pink, the yellow, green, the blue, and the purple. All right, so that's where all of these are. And then my um, pieces of vinyl are vertical so I am going to I'm going to actually just move these things around so that they are not too close to each other and that way I can um, I can just put the different colors in these spots I think that'll work so we've got one down here at the 12 and Let's see, I'll do these two at the eight, and then I'll do these two at the five, and then I'll have this at the very top. Okay, so pink, yellow, green, blue, and purple. The green, yellow, and pink, gray mats will go away when we do our cutting. We have the gold, which is ready to go, the white, so now we just have to select our cut settings. So I'm gonna hit continue. Now we're connected to the Joy and I'm just going to choose um, premium vinyl and I'm going to leave it at default pressure, but I am going to click on remember material settings. When I um, have to load different mats, you'll notice all the other mats are now gone. I just have three mats and I just, so I just need to cut this three times and then I'm gonna use the fine point blade. So I don't wanna to have to continually select my materials and the pressures. That's why we do the little checkbox. I'm gonna go ahead and load my mats and then we'll put this into the machine, allow it to measure everything, and then it will prompt us to click on the go button down here in the bottom corner and we'll get this all cut out of my 
final pieces are cut out and before I lift these off, I just wanted to show you. So this larger piece up here are the blue parts of the little um, the bowl and then I have each of the pen caps and so this is what I do when I have like a lot of little pieces is I just make sure that I have them in the spaces. There we go. Let's just say my autofocus is really just not working lately. But you can see the little pin caps. And I like to just put it all in one, let it cut it all out at one time. I know where the colors need to go and ultimately the Cricut really doesn't know what vinyl I'm putting on my mat in case I change my mind at the last moment. All right, so now I'm going to pull these off my mat just like I did the others. We're gonna get all of this beaded out. Then put our box together. So I'm gonna start from the, really from the bottom up, but the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and weed out the words. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take my time. This is, um, all of the vinyl that I'm using today is from Expressions Vinyl. And let's see, it's their Series 51 Permanent, which really you can take this off just like um, with other permanent vinyls. They do come off, but I'm just gonna weed these little middles here. And nice and smooth. I love it when my letters lead nicely. So here is my word alcohol markers. I'm just going to set that one aside because that absolutely will, I will nestle that in last, I believe. Okay, so this is going to be the base layer of the marker, uh, how, let me just say the marker pot. And oh, I love this gold. This gold is super shiny. I just love it. It's so pretty. The only other color that I love more than this is a rose gold. And I absolutely love the rose gold that they have. It is the best. I used it on my daughter's school supplies here recently. And what's funny is, is I had this final and she had picked out some school supplies, unbeknownst to her, exact match to the vinyl. What are the odds of that happening? Okay, so here are the little pens and the two elements of the bowl. So we'll just get that layered on. And then we're going to have, let's see, it looks like I've got definitely some good real estate. I'm just going to cut away the extra and put it in my scrap bin. And I think I'm going to redo my scrap organization, speaking of. Um, I have a very, very, very tiny craft space, so I don't have, like, I can't have, like, a big bulky box and stuff. And so here is those. And so I've got to find something that is relatively compact and I would say flat. And so I have an idea that I'm going to try, but um, we'll see. I think, I think I'll give it a try. I'll, I will bring that to the channel soon. And hopefully it will work for what I need and if it doesn't well you know at least we tried it. I know some people use the little um, filing system the tabletop filing systems with hanging folders and such. Um, I just have such a super tiny space and so I'm not able to really give up that kind of real estate. So all right here are all the little pen caps and they will they will go up here on top of the gold. All right, so let me read these really fast. 
So speaking of scraps, I would be really interested in knowing how you um, store and organize your scrap pieces. Um, I know every, some people just throw them all in a big bin, some people put them in drawers, some people use file folders, but I would love ideas, especially if you are someone that has a very tiny crafting space. Um, I would love to know your ideas for corralling your scrap pieces and keeping them together. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start layering all of this. And I think what I'm going to do is, actually that is perfect. And I'm gonna use up some of this transfer tape that I've had around for a while. I recently actually organized quite a few of my um, craft supplies, but I always feel like I can do a better job. Perfect. That was a perfect fit. So we're going to burnish down the front and the back, per usual. And then I'm just going to pull up the backing. And now we're going to place this down. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of washi and I'm just going to hold this in place. Um, I don't want it to slide, or slide around while I'm adding layers. Okay, I think that's probably good. That's not going to go anywhere. Alright, so now we are going to put this on here. I think I need to line my pins up. All right, just a light little burnish there. Okay, that already looks like, you know, a design that was printed. It's so pretty. Oh, maybe I do need more washi tape. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're gonna put down are these little elements here. I'm just gonna use that same piece of transfer tape. Actually, I think I can use the same piece all the way through until I have to put the entire thing down on the um, box, and then I'll probably need a bigger piece. Well, maybe if I can, there we go. Great. All right, and then this is just going to go in here. There we go. Sorry about that, I was concentrating so hard, holding my breath. So tell me down in the comments, are you someone who loves school supplies? I absolutely love school supplies, school supply shopping. Um, I just find it so fun every year and I try and get different elements. Got a little, oh, that's just the bottom layer on the, on the um, carrier sheet, okay. Um, I love school supplies. And every year, 
Of course, I'll buy school supplies all year long. That is, I'm going to get another sheet here of washi. There you go. Um, I will buy school supplies all year long. All right. Now these are so tiny. I'm not going to use transfer tape to put those on there. I'm going to grab my um, reverse tweezers and I'm actually just going to stick these on here like a little sticker. Okay. okay. Put that out of the way. So we went, my daughter and I went shopping here recently and I will tell you, school supplies is definitely not cheap these days. You know, she's, she's of the age where she wants like cute school supplies and I totally don't mind. I, I, I absolutely get it. Um, let's see, does that look like it's, yeah, that looks like it's in the right spot. So we had a great time. Oh, look, that pen, oh, y'all, I love this design. We had a great time shopping for school supplies and, um, of course she was all about getting the cute stuff and but I tell you, I mean, I haven't even hardly bought anything. And, oh, I think this is the wider end. Um, haven't even bought anything. And I've spent a small, a, a small fortune, which, you know, books and school supplies. I do not begrudge her at all. Okay, so in this design, what I'm noticing is that the little pen cap color is a, just ever so slightly tapered at the bottom and a little bit wider at the top. There we go. But she did. She had the best time and then she let me monogram some things. It was so great. I loved it. And then I got a few things for myself for my classroom. In design space, this particular pen cap right here and this um, element right here of the bowl, those are like one item. And that's why I duplicated it and did it separately because I did not want to have polka dots here, but I wanted the polka dots here. So that was a good um, idea and um, now if you're wanting to recreate this particular project um, don't forget I will put the link down in the description for design space in case you want to recreate this for yourself oh my gosh that's just so cute all by itself oh and then um, get our alcohol markers that way you can recreate it yourself and I will leave everything um, ready to go for you so you won't have to do any slicing you won't have to do any contour everything will just be ready all you have to do is open it up and cut it now you're welcome to edit a copy and make all the changes that you feel you need and that is totally fine let me just move these things out of the way and bring in the box okay there's our cute little box i'm very excited about that oh it does say teaching tree i don't know why i didn't pay attention Maybe I was just having too much fun. Sorry, this is loud. Ooh, okay. Sorry about that. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a paper towel and I wanna make sure that my vinyl stays on here. So I'm just gonna clean this off with some rubbing alcohol, right? Just regular isopropyl rubbing alcohol. And if you're new to um, 
the Cricut community. Just so you know, I got this little bottle at Dollar Tree and I just grabbed some scrap vinyl and I just wrote rubbing alcohol. And I literally just buy a huge bottle of rubbing alcohol and refill as needed. But I use it for everything. I use it to clean off the surfaces of my Cricut blanks. I use it to clean off the glass mat. Um, I use it to clean off my stencils. It's just this, I love rubbing alcohol. It is amazing. Okay, so we're gonna be putting like this right here, and then I'm going to nestle that in there like so. I'm just going to kind of dry fit that for right now. And I'm wondering if I should do the words first and then fit this in there. Yeah, I think I might do that. Okay, so let's, let's see if I cut that there, will that cover? Okay, good, I can make one cut and then I can cover both of those. Slowly but surely taking care of transfer tape scraps as well. So that's good. Oh, and here's a question as far as scraps. Okay, so I talked, I asked you about how you store and organize your scrap pieces, but also like how, how do you determine how small a size of scraps you should keep or not keep? And that is ultimately, I sometimes think I keep way too many scraps that are way too small. So, oh, so on this clear grid transfer tape, I'm just using this bottom line down here to literally line up underneath the word markers. There we go. And that will actually help me with placement. So, yeah, sometimes I wonder that if I'm keeping pieces that are just way too small, but then, you know, I have actually, I have done some really tiny little projects and I literally needed like a quarter size piece of vinyl and I was able to use some scraps and I didn't have to cut into my big sheets. So let me know your opinion, you know, should I not worry about the tiny little pieces? Should I keep holding on to them within reason? Do this really fast. I don't want it. I don't want that to stick down. Okay, so we have all right. So we're gonna have alcohol markers, and then we're gonna have this kind of like. I think we're gonna do it like that. That'll work. And. Let's see if I can line that up pretty nicely. Oh, I can use the glass mat. That was convenient with this being see-through. Okay. All right, I think that's, hopefully that's good enough. I mean, that alone is very striking against that green. So very nice. All right, here is this next one. Let's see. I guess I'll just place it like this. Now, something to, you could put down the gold layer and then add the white and then the you know, you could layer all of these, you know, one at a time there on the box itself. I, 
I like to, when possible, I like to layer off of the project um, just in case I, you know, maybe I mess it up or something. Pull that off. Throw all that in my little tabletop trash bin. Okay, so this, now I don't want it, you know, I don't know that I want it straight. I was kind of, well, no, actually I kind of want it like that. Or maybe I want it slightly angled. I need this to be straight. So what do we think? Do we want it straight? Like that. Do we want a slight angle? Oh, I think I want the slight angle. Okay. Yeah, I'm always worried that I'm going to mess up the layering. So I like to layer, you know, off, off of the blank. And then put it all down. those letters are down. Oh, that's so much easier. I should have done that to begin with. All right. Then, just pull up the transfer tape. Nice and easy. Okay. So here is the box for alcohol markers. I am so excited about this. This really just makes me happy today. So while I have you here, let's go ahead and load them in and see how many I can probably fit after I put the ones in there. Okay. So we are going to skip the brush markers and then we're just going to lay all these so I have I have priced the Copic markers um, just kind of a side note um, like at Michael's, a small box of Copic markers, like a little set, you know, is 40 something dollars. Um, they're kind of expensive online. I know that they are considered the premier. You have the Ohuhu markers, you have the Olo markers, and all right, so those are all the Hobby Lobby ones. So, um, I decided to go with the Ultimate markers simply because they they come in sets of 12 and so like one set this is called the Sunshine Valley Garden set so there's one I have a cosmic garden set and then I have a rock garden set they have different names depending on you know the markers that they are putting in that set and they're really good quality. I really like them. Um, I have done a, a um, test with ink pads and um, they work really good, especially with the Memento ink pad, but I've used other ink pads as well. I'll link that video up there um, just in case you're interested to know what type of inks work well with alcohol markers. Oh, and by the way, your Cricut pens, once they are dry and set in, um, you kind of uh, draw it out. You can have your image drawn out by the Cricut. Let it just, you know, settle for a little bit and then you can use your alcohol markers and I found that they worked really well. They played nice together. But anyway, back to the pricing. So a 12 set at Altenew is, you know, just like the others. It's like 40 something dollars, but I am getting them. I'm waiting until they put a particular set 
they have sets like set A, set B, set C, and I'm just waiting for each set to come around. They, they frequently put them on sale for like half price, so I'm getting a set of 12 for like $24, and then I usually have a $5 off. Um, this is not sponsored by Altenew in any way, by the way, but when I get my, um, oh, actually, I need these in here. When when I get my order, they usually have some sort of little thing. So a lot of times I'll have a code and I'll get 5% off. And I know 5% isn't a, a whole lot, but, um, you know, it's just nice when they're on sale and then you get a couple extra dollars off. And they do have a reward points thing that you can earn points to go toward future purchases. And so just, you know, little shout out. I really think their product is good. Um, the Copic markers, I know that those are good. And I've used the um, Ohuhu markers. Those are very nice as well. So I guess it's just really a personal preference. But I like being able to purchase these smaller sets um, as they go on sale and just slowly build my collection based on, um, based on my budget. And that way I don't have to spend like a lot of money to get a lot of markers fairly quickly. So um, anyway, yep, Sunshine Valley Garden set. Very nice. And I've got the Cosmic Garden set and the Rock Garden set. And I think at some point I will probably swatch them out. But for right now, I, you know, I'm just going to tuck that in there. In fact, I may cut off the little marker thing and then I can just tuck it down there in the side. But for now, this is um, 36, well, 37 if you add my Copic. I can easily, easily get another set, possibly two. So this is an amazing little box. I am so excited. And I did buy a couple of these, so I can continually add to my alcohol marker collection. I hope that you found this was... Um, an informative and helpful tutorial on how to use the slice tool in design space and make your own little creations from a variety of images in design space. It just makes for a flexible creative process. Uh, if you found this video helpful in any way, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help push the video out to more viewers um, that could possibly use a tutorial or inspiration of the same. And don't forget, you can also share this with your crafty friends by hitting that share button. And if you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you as part of our crafting community. So just hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you know when the next time content is posted. So until I see you in the next video, enjoy what is remaining of your summer. Don't forget to let me know down in the comments your tips and suggestions for organizing vinyl scraps. Um, and until I see you in the next video, as always, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.